This screencast is about L1 influence on the interlanguage. I'm Dr. Versalati. Let's talk about it. So we know that interlanguage is the term for the language variety used by an L2 learner that neither matches the L1 nor the L2. But importantly, it is systematic. There are patterns at each stage of development. Now, <clears throat> the L1 does influence the interlanguage. I think it might be helpful if we think about language patterns like um, paths. Our L1 is our first path that we forge. Everyone has to forge that path for ourselves as we build up our understanding of language. The path um, makes it easier, right? The, the more we speak our language, the more we read it, the more we hear it, that path gets easier, faster. We could also use an analogy like grooves on a record, right? If we stay in the groove, it's smooth. Um, the record plays smoothly. Everything keeps us on track. And these paths, that having a path for our L1, that's great. That's efficient. That's effective. Until we are trying to learn a new path, right? A new language, a new pattern. Uh, a new way of saying things. Going off that path makes the walk more difficult. And sometimes we might want to go back to the path that we know. We know that path. It's smoother. It's easier. And that path um, can even, you know, if we think of like bicycle tires going over the path again and again and again, it can almost feel like a rut that's difficult to jump out of, um, to, to, you know, hop the curb. We tend to want to go that same way when we're using a language because we're trying to communicate and that's the path we know and it takes effort to get out of that. So, um, let's look at more specifically at different ways the L1 influences the interlanguage. Okay, so one way is transferability. Um, we, we know um, our language and sometimes when we're uh, learning an L2, we ask ourselves, is, is it possible that the construction could be the exact same in the um, new language? For instance, um, the sentence, I left the door open. I'm learning Italian right now, and I, I thought, well, it couldn't possibly be the same structure. That's kind of an odd structure in English, right? It's, a, it's called a small clause. I left, and then it's almost like the door is like another subject. The door is open, right? So I thought, oh, that can't be exactly the same. Um, but actually it is. It's the same um, construction in Italian. So one way um, that L1, we could actually question if it could be the same. And um, Ortega calls that transferability. But we could also just straight up avoid constructions that we're not sure about, right? If we might if we're not sure how to do the Spanish sub subjunctive or even the English subjunctive, maybe we're just not even going to try it. I'm not sure how to do a relative clause in the language, so I, I'm just not even going to try it. And connected to that, maybe avoidance, instead of avoidance, which is not there very much or actively trying to avoid it, maybe we just underuse a particular construction because we're not sure. Um, we do it when we absolutely have to, but sometimes um, we just don't do it as much as um, expert users of the language would do it. And likewise, we might overuse a particular construction. We might say, oh, I really understand how to do this. I'm going to do it all the time, more than what a um, expert user of the language would use. Um, for instance, maybe prepositional phrases. I, I know how to do that to describe an, 
an object. So I use that all the time instead of other options like um, attributive adjectives. Another influence that um, Ortega discusses is the L1 influence of information structure. So information structure is a little bit abstract, but um, generally um, there could be, we can think of maybe two main ways languages present information in a sentence, and one is subject prominent languages, and these are like English and Spanish and Arabic, where um, the sentence starts with the subject. That's And again, this is prominent. It doesn't mean that we only have this way. Generally, we, we start with the subject, and we then have the verb phrase, right? Noun phrase, subject, verb phrase. Other languages like Mandarin, Japanese, and Korean, um, they're more often to have the topic prominent uh, construction in their regular um, language use. And it, again, it's not that English, we, we can't do it. It's just a little bit unusual. It's a little bit marked when we do it in English. But here are two examples if I were to try to do a topic um, topic first sentence. So I could say something like pizza, I love it, or about that book, you should buy it, right? So if it was subject prominent, I would say you should buy that book. But if I want to put the topic first, it would look like that. So that's one of those things that in, in if we're very accustomed to the path of given the topic and then the uh, comment about it, it might be um, tricky to use, a, it might be hard to get out of that path to do the other syntactic pattern. Um, just like if we're used to subject prominent, it might be tricky for us to get off that path and do a topic comment structure. So we've talked about lots of ways that the L1 influences the interlanguage that might hurt or hinder our development, but L1 doesn't just hinder L2 development, it can also help. Um, this is especially the case when the L2 pattern matches the L1 pattern, um, so it makes sense for us, it's efficient and effective in our learning to transfer that pattern over. But it's not just if it's an exact match, it could be more abstract, just the, the general concept could be helpful. Um, for instance, just the fact that there are something like articles in your lang your L1 can help you um, with uh, the L2 if the L2 has an article system or um, grammatical gen gender. Just having the concept of grammatical gender in your L1 helps you learn another language that has grammatical gen um, gender. Um, or tone. If you uh, are already speak a language where you know that you should pay attention to tone, it's easier to lo learn a language even if the tones are very different or the tonal patterns are very different. Just the idea of understanding to pay attention to that is helpful. Um, also, it, it doesn't mean that this makes all learning L2 learning easy, it might just speed up the rate of development. So um, L1 is, when we think about influences of the inner language, L1 is certainly our first suspect. Um, but if L1 explained it all, that would be the key to making L2 development easy. For instance, we know English, we know Spanish, so English learners of Spanish should be very successful, right? We know that language learning is more complex, so we're going to think about some other things other than L1 that influences the interlanguage. <laughs>